Well, I just get a few more days here, Sundays to preach, and so I've been praying a lot, Lord, what do God's people need that I want to give them for the last maybe three or four weeks, about three weeks I got left. I want to give them something that's really important to them. And it's important to me, but it's important to them. So I want you to take, uh, you can turn your phone on if you want, it's okay. Mine's on all the time. <laughs> Constantly reminding me what I should not be doing. But here we go, you interrupted me. <laughs> Take your Bible and turn to the book of Ephesians. I want to preach on every Christian has two natures. Every Christian has two natures. And the two natures of a Christian are very important. You got to understand something about your old nature and something about your new nature. A Christian is a schizo. He has his on this side, there's a little devil over here telling him what to do. And on this side, the Lord's telling him what to do. And all a matter of which one he's going to listen to and which one he's going to obey. Sometimes we obey the wrong one. Sometimes we obey the right one. Say amen. amen. So you got, you, got, you got to make a difference on which one you're going to obey. You got to know them both. Know something about yourself and something that you're your old man went through and something that the new man's going to go through. So I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and pick up verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2 and pick up verse 1, 2, and 3. And I want you to take your pen and I want you to underline some things in the verse. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that you'd just please wash my heart in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would renew a right spirit within me. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me not to say anything I shouldn't say. Lord, sometimes I do. Lord, help me not to do that. And Lord, if I do, help me to back away from it and keep my mouth shut. But Lord, I pray that you'd please fill me with the Holy Spirit today and use me for your praise and your glory, because this is your work and not mine. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake, amen. amen. Now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, You hath he quickened. I want you to underline the word quicken. Quicken it, or circle the word. Quicken. That means, that means made alive. And that happened right at the margin of your Bible. That's what happened to you when you got saved. When you got saved, you were made alive, your soul, your soul, quickened, who were dead, your spirit was dead, it died when you sinned. So right there, circle the word dead, and right in the margin, when I sinned. When I sinned, my spirit died. Dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in times past, before you got saved, in times past, ye walked according to the course of this world. That's how, it's like a, a course, it's like a golf course, certain way the world goes. According to the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air is Satan. That's who the prince of the power of the air is. It's Satan. Say amen. amen. The power of the air, the spirit, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The devil has some effect on them, say amen. Depending on what kind of person you are, devil messes with everybody to some extent, say amen. amen. There it is, children of disobedience. Now, verse three, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, Fulfilling, now here's what I want you to underline. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That's your old man. You still have it. The old man's never changed. Your body was not born again. Your soul was saved. Your spirit was born again. All right. Desire of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath. You're born wrong. You got something wrong with you. 
But you sin, and when you sin, things change. Things change. Now, right there, take your Bible and turn to 2 Peter chapter 1 and pick up verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. You got two natures. You got the old nature. The old nature is this man. That's this guy right here. And what you expose him to, you better be real careful because he can get hooked on things. He can get hooked on a drug. He can get hooked on smoking. He can get hooked on drinking. He can get hooked on cussing. This guy here, well, you better watch out what you, get, what you uh, deal with because this guy can have some real problems that may last you a long time. Say amen. amen. You've got to know that. Okay. Are you in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4? Say amen. amen. Okay, now, take your pen. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great, exceedingly great, and precious promises. Now, underline precious promises. You know what they are? That's this book right here. They're exceedingly great, and they're precious promises. Right in the margin of your Bible, the promises of salvation. Write it in your Bible. Take your pen. Write it in the cover of your Bible. The promises of salvation. There they are, right there. So those precious, exceedingly great and precious promises you got exposed to. And you become a Christian. You become born again, washed in the blood of Jesus through this book right here. This is what brought you the new birth in your soul and in your spirit. Say amen. You understand what I'm saying? Say amen. Now I want you to see the rest of the verse. Then it says, exceedingly great and precious promises that by these, circle it, by these, by what? By these exceedingly and great and precious promises. By those, you might be partakers of a divine nature. So when I got saved, and I bowed down my knee before the Lord and said, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. Lord, please, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins, was buried in a grave for three days and three nights and arose from the grave. Dear Lord Jesus, save my soul from hell. The Holy Spirit came in. And when he came in, he gave you two natures. Not just one. Two, you still have the old nature. That's this guy right here. But he gave you a new nature on the inside. That's the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You now have two natures. And those two natures are something that's going to give you a fit. It's the nature that you feed the most that's going to have the most victory. There's a guy, there's a guy that I, I, he'd have a, a dog fight. And then the other guy would have a dog fight. And this guy was winning all the dog fights. Winning them all, man. Winning every dog fight there was. And somebody says, how come your dog wins and that other dog loses all the time? He said, well, I feed the black dog and I don't feed the white dog. You say, what's the point? It's when, when you're going to feed. You're going to feed this guy or the one on the inside. The one on the inside, you feed with this book. The one on the outside is the flesh says, I want it! Give it to me! That's this guy right here. And you need to know something about him. Because he's a pigamist. He's an old selfish gut. Amen, brother, amen. That's what's wrong with me. I've been exposed to things I shouldn't have get, get exposed to, and they made, they made me do something that I wished I'd never done. And I still ain't over them. So, but a Christian needs to know that. He's got two natures. One nature is divine. The other nature is the nature that he got from Adam. Adam is the guy that did the problem. I was born that way. Then one day come along. One day, I'll show you three of them from Scripture. Take your Bible and turn over to uh, Psalm chapter 51. Look at verse 5. Psalm 51, 5. Psalms 51, 5. The problem is how you were born. That's the problem. 
Psalm 51, verse 5. Now watch your Bible. If you're there, say amen. amen. Psalms 51, 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in what? In what? Sin. I didn't get that. In what? Sin. Sin. Did my mother conceive me? Now look at Psalm chapter 58 and look at verse 3. Something wrong with me. And it's my, and it's my flesh. It's my flesh. Psalm 58 and look at verse 3. If you're there, say amen. amen. Psalm 58, 3. The wicked are astray from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies. Ain't that something? I'm born wrong. And it won't be changed until the trumpet sounds. When the trumpet sounds, God's going to give me a new flesh. Oh, thank God this thing ain't going to heaven. I'm going to get a new one. And so are you if you're saved. Amen. So are you if you're saved. Now, I want, I want you to watch it again. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and look at verse 21. Here's the problem. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 21. It says, 1 Corinthians 15, are you in verse 21? Say amen. amen. Now watch your Bible. This is the problem. For since by man come death, right there where it says by man, write the guy's name down, Adam. He's the problem. Adam. For since by man come death, by man come also the resurrection of the dead. Write down Jesus Christ. So there are two men in the Bible. One's Adam, one's Jesus Christ. One's Adam, one's Jesus Christ. Now read verse 22. For in Adam, in Adam, all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Underline, in Adam, in Christ, you're both. You're in Adam, this, this guy right here, in Christ is my soul. I got two natures. I'm in Adam and I'm in Jesus Christ. I'm in them both and so are you. But that's the problem. You got to know the two natures. You got to know something about yourself. You got to learn. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget where you came from. If you come from, you know, let's say, how many of you got saved when you was under 20 years old? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. How many of you got saved after you were 20 years old? After 20. How many got saved after you were 30? How many got saved after you were 40? Man. If you've lived as an unsaved person for 30 years, you're going to have a problem with this guy right here. Now look at me. This guy right here, you've been exposed to him. And if you ain't careful, he's going to continue to give you a problem. And you ain't ever going to get the victory over him if you don't do what I'm telling you to do this morning. It's that important. Now are you listening? You say, why? Wow, that goes for everybody in this building. Do you know what the devil do to you when you got saved when you were real young? The devil come along and say, you've never tried it. You ought to try it, buddy. It's a lot of fun. Give it a try. You don't know what you're missing. Let me tell you something. You ain't missing nothing with sin. Sin will never leave you the same. And if you ain't real careful, the devil will make sin look like, whoo, is that something? I got to try that. And then destroy you. Destroy your whole life, destroy your brain, destroy your heart, and destroy everything about you. Now, take your Bible. Now watch it. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Romans. Turn to the book of Romans. Now watch it in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Pick up verse 19. A very important thing. Romans 5, 19. 
Now watch it carefully. Watch it carefully. For as by one man disobedience, that was Adam, many are made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now think about that. For by one man dis disobedience, that's Adam, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many may be made righteous. Question, is that automatic? Or do you have to do with something on both of them? Do you have to receive Jesus Christ on that second part and be made righteous because you received Jesus Christ? Or does everybody automatically made righteous? No, you have a part in it. Your part is to receive Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. When you receive Jesus Christ, you took part of it. But you know the same thing is with Adam? The same thing is with Adam? Now watch the part with Adam. Watch that part with Adam. Take your Bible and look, look at the verse. Watch the verse. It's very, very important. Look at verse 14 in the same chapter. Romans chapter 5, verse 14. Watch a man when he takes part in Adam's transgression. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. That's a long, long place. Adam all the way to Exodus chapter 20. Now it says, even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is it that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression? Who is it? I'm asking you a question. Who is it that haven't sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression? That's a child, a two-year-old child. Right in the margin of your Bible. They haven't sinned. You're reading it right there in front of you. Right. That have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. That's got to be a little child. How many of you got saved when you were between 10 and 6? How many of you got saved at 6? Anybody get saved at five? One, two, three. Anybody get saved at three? Anybody get saved at two? I don't think you got saved at two years old. Say amen. That two-year-old is the one who hadn't sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. You realized that you was a sinner going to hell, and then you were capable of getting saved. Do you remember? I remember what my first sin was. Your daddy told me he remembered the sin that he'd committed the first time he ever sinned. He told me when it was. He remembered it. I remember mine. I was going into a store when I was a little boy. I don't remember how old I was. I don't remember the age. But I went in the store, and I walked around the store, and I grabbed a piece of bubble gum. Big old thick piece of bubble gum, a round one. How many remember that bubble gum that was about that big around and it was round? <laughs> Boy, did they taste good. And I took that piece of bubble gum, put it in my hand, and walked out. And something says, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know this is wrong and this is a sin. What are you doing? I walked out with a piece of bubble gum in my hand. And before I got to the door, this guy grabbed my hand and lifted it up like this. And I looked up at him and he said, I'm gonna tell your mother. I started crying right in and there. I wasn't worried about my mother. I was worried about doing, stealing something that didn't belong to me. That was the first time I ever sinned. Something happened right then and there. As me as a little boy, something happened. And you were the same way. I don't know what your sin was, but you was the same way. When that happened, your spirit died. Take your Bible, turn to Romans chapter 5, and look at verse 9. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter, make it 7. Romans chapter 7, pick up verse 9. Are you with me in Romans 7, 9? What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say you've got two natures. One of these natures, there's something bad wrong with him. And he's going to give you a fit. And when you've exposed him, to gambling, 
Gambling can be an awful hard thing to get over. When you expose him to uh, cussing, cussing can be a terrible thing to get over. When you expose him to lying, that's a terrible thing to get over, even if you're a Christian. You ever meet a Christian liar? I have. I've met a Christian liar that lied constantly. And you say, what is it? It's their old nature is what it is. Not their new nature. It's the old nature. Uh, Romans chapter 7, are you in verse 9? Say amen. amen. For I, this is the Apostle Paul, for I was alive. Was he alive? Said he was. Said he was alive. For I was alive. He said he was alive. There must be some part of him that was alive. I was alive without the law. No Ten Commandments. Without the law. I was alive without the law. But when the commandment came, wow, that commandment is thou shalt not covet. <laughs> when the commandment came, back there in verse 7, so underline right there, when the commandment come, draw a line back up to verse 7. Draw a line back up to verse 7. That, that commandment was thou shalt not covet. All right, when the commandment came, sin revived because it's in him it's part of him he's born with it sin revived and i died his spirit died that's why he has to be born again his spirit is born again your soul didn't die your body didn't die your spirit died your soul doesn't need to be born again your spirit needs to be born again you need the new birth if you're not saved but when you get saved a divine nature comes in and the spirit is born again and you have a connection with God. If you use it. If you don't use it, your flesh will run you. It will run you. Why? Because you don't know how to get victory over him. Now, take your Bible and turn to the book of Romans. Turn to the book of Romans and turn to Romans chapter 7 and pick up verse 23. Here is how to get to victory. This is how to get to victory. There's a victory that you can have. And you can have it. You probably won't have it all the time. I've never met a Christian that is whenever a battle it gets into. You're going to lose some battles. You're going to lose some battles. You ain't going to win them all. I've never met a Christian that could win every single battle. But you want to win a few of them. For the Lord's sake, say amen. Right. Now here we go. Romans chapter 7 verse 23 says, But I see, are you in Romans 7 23? Say amen. amen. But I see another law in my members. It's in your flesh. In my members. Now what's the next word? What is the next word? One more time. What is the next word? Then you're in a war. Circle it. War. There's a war going on right here. My flesh says, it's fun. My flesh says, look at me. My flesh says, my flesh says I want it. Don't kid yourself about it. Your flesh wants something it's not supposed to have. That's the way it is. Came from Adam. When Adam ate of that tree, he destroyed us all. But God give us a victory. Against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. All right. I want you to uh, underline it and make it very plain and very clear that it's a very important thing. I want you to uh, see where the Apostle Paul says something. And he says it right here in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, he says, uh, Romans chapter 7, he says, uh, In my flesh dwelleth no good Good thing. Uh, all right. Romans 7, verse 18. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. Here's something I want you to see. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. In my flesh, Romans 7, 18. In my flesh, no, 
For I know that is in my flesh dwelleth what? Dwelleth what? No good thing. So I want you to take your right hand and then put that index finger like this and take your left hand and bring your left hand up like this and I want you to quote the verse with me. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Boy, ain't that a truth that a lot of Christians forget. And the flesh is not that way. And there's nothing good about it. But you know what we think? We look in the mirror, boy, and he, well, look in the mirror. Come, look in the mirror. Look, look at me. That's the flesh. Amen, amen, amen. The flesh never changes. The flesh don't get better. I'm 82 years old, and the flesh don't get better. I used to think it was going to get better, but it don't. <laughs> no, it don't. Same old. In fact, if you allow him, boy, boy, I'll tell you, that guy right there, boy, he, he, he'll run your whole life and destroy your whole life. All you'll do is lay up treasures here and nothing in heaven. Because it's all done here. I was dancing with a girl one time. Before I got married now, folks, before I got married. I was dancing with a girl one time. And uh, I didn't think there was any problem with it. I really didn't. I didn't think there was any problem with it. Until after it got through... When we got through, I was saying, no problem. Got through, went out and got in the car. And the other guy in the car said to me, she'll fornicate with you in the back seat if you want it. I said, what have I done? Where am I at? What's going on? You better watch out who you're dancing to and dancing with. You'll get in trouble and stay in trouble, honey. And that's because I love you. And you won't ever get over it if you ain't careful. Because it will affect you. And I am an old man. But I found out the hard way. I didn't. I got out of that car and left. I got out of that car and left. And didn't, didn't do what the other guy suggested. Thank God I did. Thank God I did. But a lot of young people don't pay a bit of attention to what I'm saying. It goes over like a rock, over their head like that. They don't care a thing about it. You better watch that this life. This life is full of things that will destroy you. And it's this guy right here. In my flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. Take your Bible and turn to Romans chapter 6 and look at it again. This time, look at it in verse 11. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Now here's what you've got to get. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. You've got to get it, Christian. You've got to get it. You've got to have it. You've got to have it. If you're going through the Christian life and you're in a war, I'm in a war all the time. All the time. A Christian is in a war constantly with himself. We blame everything on the devil. Oh, the devil made me do it. I don't think he's that interested in you. Write it down. You ain't that important. The devil's not going to waste time with you. One of his crowd might, but the devil, he, he messes with a lot greater men than I am. He messed with Simon Peter. He messed with David. He messed with some men. He ain't messing with me. Maybe his crowd is. I'll, I'll grant you that. But you know the real problem? This guy right here. You know what he wants? He wants a donut. He desires a donut. A donut. You say, a donut. I'm a diabetic. And if I eat my donut... 
this thing he'll go bing, 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 and it's up to 560 with a donut. That's what I got on my, that's a warning machine. <laughs> I haven't ate a donut for a year now. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, when she puts candy in the, on a the shelf there, I have a hard time sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? If I ever decide to commit suicide, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down there and buy me a dozen donuts and eat them all at the same time. <laughs> do a donut side. <laughs> Here it is. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. This is what you got to have. Romans 6, 11. It says, Likewise, likewise, what's the next word? Reckon. Reckon, reckon, reckon. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. You got to do them both. I'm dead, but I'm alive. I'm dead, but I'm alive. I'm dead, but I'm alive. So when it comes to sin, I'm dead. When it comes to doing something for God, I'm alive. I can clean the uh, uh, snow off the sidewalk. Yes, I can. How many understand what I just said? When it comes to handing out Bibles up at the mall, I can, I'm alive. But when it comes to Eating a donut, I've got to reckon myself to be what? Dead. One more Christian, be what? Dead. Dead. And that's the warfare of a Christian. Constantly, you're in a battle. It's a war against yourself. You're in a war. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Now, Christian, lay it to heart. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. You reckon yourselves to be dead indeed into sin. Sin will always be there. I don't know why it is. I don't know why it is. I don't know why it is that there's always something. There's always something that's there. It's in the world we're in. We're in a certain world that, bam, there it is. Bam, there it is. Bam, there it is. Constantly. All the time. Here it is. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Are you there? Say amen. Look at your Bible. Mark your Bible, Christian. Mark your Bible. Romans chapter 8, verse 13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, we do, don't we? Say amen. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall what? Die physically. Sin kills you. You're going to die physically. Sin kills you. You shall die. But, but, thank God for that. But if ye, now underline it, through the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. Circle it. Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. Through the Spirit, do mortify. That's a morgue. Mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. You live longer. You won't live forever because you, don't, you don't, don't do it all the time, but you should. You can through the Spirit. So you say, Lord, please fill me with the Holy Spirit because I've been down this road before. And Lord, I've been down this road before. So I know what kind of what this road is going like. It's, I'm, walk, I'm walking down the road and right around the corner, there's a big old mud puddle. And I walk around there, splash, 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 through the mud puddle I go. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Haven't you been through a muddy spub hole and messed up and said, oh, Lord, please forgive me? Say amen. amen. So you're walking down there and you say, right around the corner, there's a mud puddle around there. And I'm going to walk through that mud puddle if I ain't careful. Lord, please, please, I need your help. Lord, please help me. Help me, Lord, please help me. I'm about to walk through a mud puddle, and Lord, I don't want to. But my own, my own flesh, I know what it is. Lord, please help me not walk through the mud puddle. Now you got it. You got it. And you know what you do? 
Oh, there's a mud puddle around the corner, but no, I, I'm okay. I can, I can handle it. I'm a big boy. To the mud puddle you go. Say amen. amen. Stop going through the mud puddle. And say, Lord, I've been there and done that. And Lord, I'm tired of it. Lord, please, will you fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me by your spirit reckon this old man to be dead when the time comes? True to spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body. Ye shall live. You live longer, Christian. You live longer. You want to live longer? Then mortify the deeds of the body and you'll live longer. Every eye closed, every head bowed.